Hello and welcome back to Walk the Cinema Podcast, and it's that time of the year again. We're going to be covering all the Best Picture nominees, all ten of them, and we're going to start this week with All Quiet on the Western Front. So this is the second time All Quiet on the Western Front story has been nominated mm. for Best Picture. We'll this, see if it wins. The adaptation of the book, so it's not technically a remake, because it's not remaking the movie. It's right adapting the book which is a book that a lot of people know about right yeah i think it's one of the books that i at least in my school district a lot of people had to read in high school i remember being in ninth grade and this was one of the the books chosen for us to read and i'll be honest Mm-hmm. It was a hard read for me in terms of um, entertainment, I guess. Right. Uh, I wouldn't say the movie is entertaining either. Yeah. It's I, more of a gritty, realistic, mm-hmm. kind of a downer look yeah. at a, that moment in time. Right. World War One, and this was written before World War Two. Right. So it's its message was trying to not repeat it, right? And yeah. ended up repeating it. But we see that in the movie that's clearly anti-war. Right. And the book is, is like you said, very much anti, anti-war. anti And it, even though it was a hard read in terms of being entertained, I did read the Spark Notes version of it <laughs> to get through my class. And, you know, I would read certain passages that I felt were pertinent to the story or pertinent to, like, the literary accomplishments or whatever. And, you know, at the heart of it is just some teenage boys that are basically brainwashed by the educators at their school to participate in this war that they view as, like, something that will bring them honor, that will bring them glory Mm -hmm. you know they think it's they have like this romanticized vision of of war yeah and they kind of all think it's going to be really easy because they've been kind of brainwashed to thinking that germany is so great Mm -hmm. that why wouldn't it be easy for them to win this yeah and then once they're in the trenches they won yeah and they're already seeing people dying and they already have mud in their socks and Yeah, it's just, they become disillusioned very quickly. And I think in, in this, this deviates from the book quite a bit from my, from my memory and just doing like a quick little read through again. Um, It's, it's very different. Like the main themes are there. The characters are there for the most part and the key points are still hit, but for example, I think in the movie it shows you kind of a better um, depiction of, like, they literally just would take these young boys that signed up to be in the army or in the the military and would pretty much just plop them into the middle of war without much training. In the book, it goes through, like, their training sequence and they meet, like, this really hardened kind of guy like general or something i don't remember what his status was but he was like the trainer for them and that's kind of where they started to to become disillusioned but i think in the this movie it feels more poignant that it's like they're realizing it as they're like very far into yeah. something they can't get out of they're in the western front right they're in paris in the trenches yeah so there's no going back of that yeah Uh, And it really does depict trench warfare uh, brutally, I would Mm. say. Not something that you would want to find yourself involved in. No, it's disgusting. It's terrible. You don't have an escape if you get attacked or bombed or anything like that. Yeah. And there's mud people on top of each other. You don't really get to rest for months. You yeah. don't really get to eat well for months. No. And I just, there was a, a line that kind of happened at the beginning um, where one of our main character, our main character is Paul. Paul um, and he has a group of friends, but 
the the one friend that dies first he dies on the first night is Lud- ludwig and he says something that like really stuck with me throughout the film as being something that just made me so sad was um my mother told me to watch what i eat or yeah. you know be careful of what i eat and as as they're taking shelter in like a dugout while the French side is bombing them Mm -hmm. like mercilessly. And then he ends up dying that night. It's kind of like, it's infathomable to him that like the only thing that he had to worry about was the food, like nothing else, you know? They're like just so convinced that it would be no problem. Yeah. And then they're kind of not ready for it. Yeah, because they're they're teenagers. Yeah, in the book and in the movie, I think they um they're between the ages of like seventeen and nineteen, I think. And I think that's kind of important, right? You got to keep that for sure because it's part of the humanizing in a way the enemy. Yeah, because they are kids and they don't know what they're doing, and that's what we see from them. We see these kids that have the national pride, mm-hmm. but. At heart, they're kids, and they don't know what they're doing, and it's hard for them to be there. And we also see that it's hard for some of them to kill, and they realize that the other side is also just like them. Yeah. Like, and I, Paul goes through that, right? We see him kill someone with a knife, yeah, and then realizing that it's just a guy like his friends are, like Kat is, yeah. a guy with a, a wife and a kid at home. Yeah. And he, like, that's also a really powerful scene that I enjoyed in the movie. And it does kind of happen in the book. Well, it, it does happen in the book. It's just a little bit different. I think um, he uh, is sitting in the trench in the book, I think, and he kills somebody. And it takes, like, hours for this guy to die. Right. Like, in agony. I actually think so. the, the movie did a really good job with that particular scene. Yeah. With the shots where they, like... You realize they're the same Mm -hmm. because just two guys in their dirty uniforms laying there. Yeah. And then once they get further apart and it cuts between them, you're like, this could be switched. Yeah. It could be the the German guy that's dying and the French guy that's crying about it. And it literally would be the same because both sides were kind of just forced into this. Yeah. It's kind of like one of those upsetting... um, realizations i guess and and this is like one of the book's main objectives is like you're like the, even though the government is like telling these kids and like they're in a fight with each other doesn't mean that the people fighting are much different from each other no you know? yeah like the the bottom of the pyramid people the, the foot soldiers they're people that got dragged out of their homes their schools they're recruited to put their life in danger and that's what the kids are told like paul is told he's probably gonna die in the first night Mm -hmm. because he can't put his mask on yeah or because he helps his friend put his mask on first instead of putting his so there's a, a lot of like you're just me you're just here to yeah you're just here to kind of slow down and die yeah there was a lot of scenes in this movie that I enjoyed. Um, and and especially at the end when they kind of like tell you the historical type of things where it's like all these hundreds of thousands of men died on both sides to gain a few hundred feet. Yeah. Like the, the... Like in four years, nothing yeah. was accomplished. We were just killing each other and standing ground. Yeah. So it's like, that's upsetting. And the ending is very upsetting, yeah. obviously, where they're like, let's do one last attack, even though we agreed on peace, mm-hmm. because the general is from a different political standing than the people that signed the peace treaty. Yeah, well, that that was interesting to me, and I'm not sure I I liked it as much. So in the book, there's not that, that secondary plot of, like, seeing the, the generals and higher-ups sign that peace treaty. Mm-hmm. And Paul dies, I think, a month before the treaty was even signed in the book. And so there's not this, like, um, final push forward and stuff. But I think that I liked the I liked that they had it, him die and, like, Kat die on the last day. Because it, it I think it 
highlights that their deaths really are meaningless. It's like just a, kind of a like petty everybody's death, too, yeah, because it wasn't even a war related debt. Yeah, he was a he stole eggs from the farmer, and his kid chased him and shot him. Yeah, and it's like not even war related. It's just the pettiness of yeah. the death where it's so meaningless, and he could have survived. There's a lot of over dramatization, though. I feel at this point. Mm. I think both his death being so petty and like worthless, mm. and the death of Paul at the end being like literally the last death of the war. Yeah, I think it's a little dramatic. Yeah, like I- sure, someone has to be the last death of the war. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. He slowly dies, and it just feels. It is impactful, right? It is sad. Yeah. I think I I think I enjoyed it. I my thing that I didn't really enjoy that I didn't really find necessary. I guess it is kind of there to build suspense is the peace treaty type stuff where they're going back like on the the guys on the train and them talking back and mm-hmm. forth getting I feel the like 72 it's not necessary hours. to be on camera. That's that's the Yeah. Those scenes could just be the rumors that the soldiers hear whatever. Yeah. And we do see the rumors that the soldiers hear and we do see like the soldiers on some street celebrating shooting their guns in happiness. I think that would have been enough. Yeah, I think it wasn't like necessary and it just kind of makes the movie longer, you know, cuz this is a two and a half hour war film right and uh, not that this is a critique on the movie itself but like we've had a lot of i think war movies kind of very similar to this Mm -hmm. in the past several years like 1917 was very much the same type of aspect or yeah, the same the, type the of trench wars trench and wars and the no the no man lands are very similar looking yeah it which, kind of seems like they're reusing the set which they're not yeah. but you know yeah which obviously they have different stories that they're telling and it's you know from one point of view like one side of the war versus the other side of the war but you I think know this is more interesting than 1917 and yeah it's, it's a lot more complicated. 1917 is a lot more straightforward. Mm-hmm. And this is more, uh, it's, a, it's a lot more years. Obviously, 1917 is a one shot movie mm-hmm. where it tries to portray the one shot. Yeah. So this is different, but at the same time, it does feel like there's a lot of war movies. This particular book has been adapted multiple times, and one of them won Best Picture yeah. in 1930. But I do think. It's been almost a hundred years and remaking it. And this is a German language remake. Mm-hmm. So it's even more like it's their story. Yeah, it's thing. it's it's more different than any other like you could readapt the the movie in America again and it has been done in like the fifties, I think. But now that we have all the new technologies, we have just an understanding now, at least the the Academy starting to get an understanding that foreign films can be as good as American-made films. Mm-hmm. So this is remade in the German language. You know, the people that are being portrayed. Yeah. It's remade with modern technology, modern CGI, yeah. modern, like, everything. And it's new technology. And it's sure it's the same story, but it, it feels different. Because it's so technologically different mm-hmm. from the 1930s. Yeah. That I think it, there is a point in making this again. Mm. Yeah. And I think it's coming on kind of at a good time where there is kind of a pretty high profile war happening right now. You know? And it just highlights that war is silly yeah and i i felt like i saw similarities in like the excitement of the youth in germany Mm -hmm. you did see that in russia there was a lot of youth that truly just hated ukraine and was excited to go for it and then as soon as they're in the war they're trying to get out yeah and now we don't fight war the same way right if we have someone on their knees we're not going to shoot them in the head yeah that was that was also a scene that i thought was hard to to stomach, I guess. And just like the war practices of World War One in right. general are the really hard to stomach. Yeah. Awful. 
because it just it really does like you're just setting someone on fire and that seems like one of the worst ways right. to go and and the the gassing where uh they are like the the company that Paul and his friends are are with or waiting for some new recruits mm-hmm. and uh they have to go looking for them and they stumble across them in a room and they all have died due to gas because yeah. they took their masks off too soon and it all was like kids a, too it's just awful yeah and they're yeah they're all young they didn't have like proper training it was a stupid mistake mm-hmm. but it's it's not like they knew better you know so it's just kind of it's just sad and then i feel like you know at the end, um, Paul, after Kat dies, um, he goes into this kind of rage where he really doesn't doesn't feel like there's anything worth living for anymore. Like, all his friends are dead. He doesn't have anybody really to come home to besides his, his mom, you know, which at, at this point, all the atrocities that he's seen, he's seen multiple of his friends die he's seen someone commit suicide by stabbing themselves brutal. multiple times that with a fork brutal suicide and yeah and then his friend is one of his mentors that he really looked up to and cared about deeply died in such a pointless manner you know yeah so and then he he ends up saving a new recruit that literally arrives that day on the last day of battle and he saves him and that recruit stumbles upon his body when he's collecting you know the the dog tags and i think that um that scene particularly highlights even though they're probably around the same age give or take a year or two because i think at this point it's it has been roughly six months to a year since he joined No, it's been more it's been 18 months at least we skip in time 18 months okay so it's 18 months um (sighs) So they're not that far in age, but like you see Paul's like mud caked body and he looks just so hardened and older than like the new. Yeah, that's what bright war does to you. It, it really ages you. You're yeah. Part of it is you're not getting rest or nutrition, but other part of it is just like you're seeing things you're not meant to. You're seeing people die in ways that aren't natural. Yeah. You're killing people in ways that are just brutal and make you feel terrible but you're trying to save your own skin yeah and yeah it's it's a brutal movie war is brutal i think it gets the point across yeah and i and i liked the the moments of like friendship that he experiences with with the men there and especially with cat like it, it kind of does feel like even though they're not um i think in the book it kind of is more like a, a, a son father relationship and this in the movie it does too but it feels like they're a little bit closer in age than they are in the book. Yeah, they're more friends than they are son father. Yeah, but it's still like I think a beautiful relationship to to behold. And then um there's like a few things that I didn't like about it. Like I said, I thought the plot line of of them signing the treaty where you see that they're they're like living it up on on the train and like they yeah. get fresh croissants and I mean I get I get that it's like a, a a comparison, right? We're yeah. seeing this guy complaining that croissants aren't fresh yeah. when there's kids dying in the battlefield. Yeah. I understand that and I understand its inclusion, but I do think it slows it down way too much. Yeah. And it doesn't add yeah, as much as it, it takes. Yeah, there's no there's not a lot of value. And then um we both commented on this while we were watching it. There's a scene where um people are being murdered and uh the blood splatters on the camera lens. Yeah. That and took me out. Yeah, it does kind of take you out because it's like it only happens that one time and Because there'll be war movies where like the camera is kind of really close and it wants to make you feel close. Mm-hmm. So when there's explosions, dirt falls out of the camera. When when someone gets killed, then the blood will be on the camera. But in this is just the one yeah, it's that one scene. It happens one time, and it's really obvious when he's fighting someone against the camera, and it gets blood on the camera, and it's a little oaky. I don't know. I don't know how else to put it. Yeah. 
It is. It is kind of weird and it has a different tone than right, I think. But the that's rest that's of it. nitpicky. I think the movie it's technically yeah. Like all the technical aspects are mm-hmm. great. Mm-hmm. We're gonna go through the nominations, but our ratings first. I gave it a seven mm-hmm. because I don't know. It's it is good, obviously, but I think it's slow. And it is slowed down by the, the scenes that aren't the teenagers and what they're going through. Yeah. And I think that's more important for the message to show the people that don't want to be there and the people that are kind of just suffering. I think that's more important than to show the the politics of it. I understand part of why they showed the politics to, but I don't know. It's good. It's an adult movie, which is something we also mentioned yeah. We're watching Avatar and watching this, it's like they're completely different age ranges. Yeah. Yeah. It definitely has like a very different tone. <laughs> like there's a, there's it feels a much adult. different. It, yeah. it feels so serious and adult and just dire and sad. There's no, I mean, there's moments of glee, but there's no real happiness. Yeah. It's very like bleak. Um, I gave this an eight out of 10. I thought it did some stuff really well. And I think it, I don't know. There were there were a lot of scenes that I feel like have impacted me and I will think about for a while, you know? Yeah. Um so I think, you know, it's good. I liked it. So this got nine nominations. Yeah. Production design, which was actually more impressive than what I thought it would be. Mm. I feel like the 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 war felt more expansive mm-hmm. and there was just like just great sets and just everything looked great and realistic and yeah. never really that never that never really was a problem. Cinematography again was great, but war movies are always really good at portraying the expansion of war and yeah. showing you the difference in in the battlefields and the no man's land and just the cinematography worked really well. The colors were really deep. I agree. The black was really dark mm-hmm. to a point where I kind of just had to turn all the lights off so it didn't like reflect. Mm-hmm. Adapted screenplay, it was always going to get that. Yeah, and I don't, I don't know if if the adapted screenplay is going to hold up. We'll see when we do our predictions. We'll like discuss it more, but yeah, it was but it was always going to get that nomination. Yeah, and and. Because people recognize the book, right? People recognize the story. Mm -hmm. So even if it wasn't great, it was always going to get it anyway. So there's no debating that one. Yeah. Visual effects. I guess it depends. Because with like 1917, which is another war movie, I don't think people realize how good the visual effects were until the featurette Mm. that showed the visual effects being made. And I think kind of need that for Mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. Because I don't know where the visual effects necessarily are. Because in 1917, I was surprised that the buildings were visual effects. Like, they created the buildings from nothing. Yeah. So with this, kind of kind of neat to see that. But some of the, the kills were visual effects and they look great. Mm-hmm. The explosions. So I don't have a problem with that. It had best sound. The sound was good. The sound was good. I thought it was a little bit um, weird, which is just something that I noticed was... We watched it in German with English subtitles and it would start subtitling conversations in the background, but like I could not hear words being said like yeah. at all. Well, but it's a war movie. I think it's more about the sound nominations are more about the environment that they create. Yeah, I suppose. But that was just something that I noticed while we were watching it. Got original score, which I really like the score. It, it, yeah, it, it yeah. does repeat itself yeah. at points, right? Where they use the same like heavy, ominous soundtrack but it's it does work yeah and, and i it, think and it's kind of very powerful yeah i, I don't know it's very powerful i feel me. like anytime you hear music in in this movie it does kind of like set the mood really well yeah so i i also really enjoyed i think it's probably one of my sound. favorite scores yeah, if i score. had to to uh to just guess mm-hmm. which one i would pick at the end because we're 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 not making official <laughs> picks yet, but this is just a really good score. So I'm, yeah, makeup and hairstyle. I mean, yeah, the, I mean all the mud stuff that he keeps going through. Yeah, and all the the 
the deaths mm-hmm. and all the like the the damage that happens to them where the, like they lose eyes and they get cuts and it just looks very realistic mm-hmm. like very realistic yeah i agree it it is great makeup and then international feature film for germany obviously probably the favorite to win that just because mm-hmm. it also got best picture yeah and that's nine nominations who are foreign film I think that's that shows great progress from the Academy. Mm-hmm. Of course, it's a movie they're familiar with already. Yeah, it's like but very, it doesn't matter. It's very like Oscar friendly. I'd say like even the if story. This, that's why even if this movie sucked in my opinion and I hated it, I had a terrible time. I still would be happy it got nine nominations just for just for historical factors of it being a foreign film that's just dominating the nominations. Yeah. And it did feel watching the nominations that this got everything, but I think that's because it, alphabetically it's the first movie. Yeah. So you kept hearing it as the first movie mm-hmm. over and over again. Yeah. But yeah, I'm happy it got nine nominations. Yeah, and I hope it, it it'll I think it'll win some things. So Yeah, it'll definitely win at least a couple, I think. But I think that's all for this episode. Don't forget to like, subscribe, leave us a comment, and stay tuned for all the other nine nominated Oscar Best Picture movies that we are going to cover. Yeah, posting twice a week until the Oscars. Yes. So we'll see you next time.